Welcome back in today's Sunday Spotlight, Changing Times. On the second Sunday in March each year, we lose an hour of sleep as we transition from Eastern Standard Time to Eastern Daylight Saving Time. The process then reverses itself, of course, in the fall. There's a bill in the Connecticut House to do away with those changes and have Connecticut consistently work in the Atlantic Standard Time Zone, stopping the clock on future time changes. Talk to here to talk about why that proposition is so complicated is Dr. David Prerow. He's the author of the book Seize the Daylight and is the go to expert on this topic in the U.S. talking time change. So, Dr. Prerow, tell us, are we seeing these proposals? We're seeing it in Connecticut, but are you seeing them around the country? Yes, there are several proposals in different states around the country. There have been those kind of proposals for years. Right now, there seems to be some more of them. Um, but there's been proposals on and off for years. I know many people grumble, uh, especially after they lose that hour of sleep, as we'll be doing next weekend. Right. What, what's the reasoning? Why did this all come about in the first place, and why is it still here? Well, I think that the current system that we have is an excellent compromise because daylight saving time from spring to fall, which is what we have now, has many advantages, uh, and uh, most people like it. However, to have it in the winter... We would have very dark and cold mornings, and there's a lot of negatives of that. So by having that one hour of uh, time change, which is unpleasant for lots of people, the benefit is that we were able to have 240 days of daylight saving time in the summer, spring and fall, and then about 120 days of standard time in the winter. So we, I think we get the best of both with that current system. Now, in the Connecticut proposal, one of the things that the people uh, who signed on to the bill have talked about is that Connecticut is out on the eastern end of eastern time. So maybe it does make mm -hmm. more sense for places like Connecticut and Rhode Island and you know Boston, places like that, to, to switch time zones. It, does that argument hold water, in your opinion? Well, eastern time really is based on Philadelphia time, it turns out. And so Connecticut is a little east of Philadelphia, but it's not dramatically east of Philadelphia. What happened was... The Eastern time zone expanded over time towards the West. So it seems bigger than it really should be. The original Eastern time zone was a lot smaller and, as I said, centered on Philadelphia. So Connecticut is not that much off from the center of the time zone. Now, the bill here, I think, like a lot of the proposals, certainly in our neighboring states, would involve other states having to do it before we would make that switch. You're, you're someone who says that making that switch would be a complicated undertaking, right? Yes, there's no, uh, right now, the law allows a state to choose either the current system that you have or year-round standard time, but year-round daylight time is not a choice right now. Uh, it could change the federal law, but right now it doesn't allow that. The other option is to try to switch time zones, which is what I think is proposed in Connecticut, but even switching time zones has to be approved by the Federal Department of Transportation and it's usually a fairly complicated process to switch time zones. So that's not an easy road as well. I did a little research uh, on some of you reading some of what you've written on this. And I know there's been a lot of history behind all this. One thing happened in World War One. Something else happened in World War Two. Just give us a little idea of where this all comes from. And because there's a lot of history behind it. Right. Well, yes. Well, it goes way back to Benjamin Franklin. He had the original idea of trying to wake up. Uh, earlier and make better use of daylight. Uh, it started really with a person in England uh, named William Willard. He proposed it to Parliament in the early 1900s. It got picked up during World War I, used by both sides, uh, again, World War II. And uh, then afterwards, it was uh, randomly around the country and around the world. Um, in, in 1970s, we put in daylight saving time year round, uh, which is what's proposed for, for Connecticut. Uh, to uh, for an energy crisis in the early 70s. And what happened was it would prove very unpopular and it was quickly uh, gotten rid of because people didn't like the very dark mornings where they had to wake up in the dark, go to work in the dark and send their kids to school in the dark. And so that uh, experiment of nationwide year on daylight saving time proved uh, very unpopular. And right, now Dr. we have, Pura, we've we'll have to leave it, it right there as long as we could. We'll have to leave it right there. I know people can go check okay, out your sure. website and read your book and learn a lot more. We're all out of time. We appreciate you weighing in on this. And of course, we'll have to see what happens here in Connecticut. Thanks for a few minutes. OK, great. Sunday Thanks. Morning. It's good to talk to you, Eric. All right. Thank you. If you have a comment you'd like to share about today's program, you can send us an email. Our address is CT21 at WFSB.com. We just might share some of your comments in an upcoming show. That is CT21 for this week. CBS Sunday Morning with Jane Pauley is next. 
Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll meet you back here in Studio A next Sunday morning. Thanks for watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV.